All right, what's up YouTube? Mustang Matt here again, bringing you guys another brand new video. And today we're getting started on putting in all the fuel lines for the car. I'm actually getting started right now on putting in the um, return line. So that's dash, I'm using dash six and return line. Um, three eighths is the size, I believe. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started with that. I've already got a lot of the parts, so I'm gonna go show you what parts uh, I'm gonna be using right now and uh, everything like that so that you guys can see if you're working on a project fox body drag car kind of doing something like I am or just uh, running a you need uh, help running your fuel cell on your fox body and all the lines and you'll kind of know from this video how to do it so let's go ahead and get started I'll show you all the parts that I've got right now and uh, yeah let's check it out all right so if we go back here I've already test fitted the line so it's actually already underneath here. There's the push lock. I'm using Fragola Systems push lock from Summit Racing. So that's obviously going to connect there. And I got the 150 degree bend dash six. So that is actually dash 10 on my fuel cell. So I'm waiting for the adapter for this side but I'll probably still try to push, put this one on. Um, I might wait, I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll figure it out though. So that just needs an adapter to dash 10 and then that'll be all on. And then right here I've got the uh, other side, dash six, Fragola 45. Um, this is for the, I'll show you real quick what this is for. So I ordered this from Jags because they were the only ones I saw that had it, but I think Amazon has it too. Let me go ahead and uh, might be able to get this open with one hand. All right. So this one's actually for the supply side, but I'll go ahead and show you guys anyways. So this should thread onto here. Boom. So that threads onto there and goes from, I have these adapters that I got off Amazon and you can see I didn't put it on yet. So that's kind of what this adapter is and then it goes from dash six to dash eight for my supply, so then I'll run dash eight back to my fuel pump. And then here's the other end of the hose that I brought up and over. Kind of hard to see, but that's gonna connect down here. And that's how I got this, or that's why I got this 45 here. So this will just kind of 45 and connect up to here, to that hose. So all I really have to do is connect one side and then start working my way back underneath I'll start working my way back you can see the lines just hanging right there so I got extra line thankfully I got 15 feet of that so if you're doing a fox body that's what you need for the whole car it's 15 foot length and um, yeah once again I'm just using the Fragola Parker push lock so I'll have to see how hard it is to actually get this on because I've heard it's pretty hard so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the line back out. And I think I'm gonna be using the boil method or the heat gun method. So I'll let you guys know how it works out, but I'm gonna start getting this fitting put onto the hose. All right guys, so I'm back. It is a couple days later. Finally got some parts in the mail, that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully uh, finish it up or get it mostly finished up. Today, the both sides, return and supply. As you can see here, got my Bosch 044. It's what I went with for a fuel pump. It goes up to, I think, 73.5 PSI, and I'm only gonna need 60 when I run the, uh, when I run the motor NA stock. I'm only gonna need 60, so that means I have about 13.5 pounds, uh, more pounds of fuel pressure that I can use for when I boost the car. And that should be plenty for getting started. And then, you know, if I want to go higher horsepower, 
then I'll need two of these bad boys in line. But I have on here some adapter fittings. Let me get, get the light in here a little bit better. So I have uh, this adapter fitting. You just remove the uh, old one, I think, and it's got a little rubber O-ring on it already, so I took off the copper crush washer. Um, and then on this side, it's that side is dash eight to Bosch fitting. And then this, as I drop it, I caught it with my foot though. Um, and then this side is, sorry, I have it backwards. This side is dash 10 to Bosch in, inlet. And then uh, as you see here, I ordered this. I don't remember the exact brand that this clamp is, but it's a pretty nice clamp. So I'm gonna be mount using that to mount it in the car. That was only about 15 or 20, I think, on Amazon. And then my fuel pump, Amazon had the cheapest price. All right, and then to finish off the supply, I have Dash 8, 15 feet, which should be enough because I use 15 feet on my other uh, return line. And then this is just three feet of Dash 10 because I'll show you, I just need a small piece of that. Here are my Dash 8 straight fittings that I'll need because right here is one of my fuel filters. This will be after the after the pump before the rail. I don't know where I'm gonna put it yet, but maybe somewhere underneath up front or uh, on the firewall area. And that'll go to those, those connectors will connect it. And then I have some clamps here for dash eight. And then right here is a dash 1090. I'll show you what that is for. This is a dash 10 coupling to go from this end here to my Summit 100 micron pre-filter. I went with a 100 micron pre-filter and a, this one is 40 microns, I think, after. That's what I read online some people do, so I figured I'd just do that and see how it works. So I got that and then uh, a straight, hopefully this will work, a straight dash 10, which will come off the other side of here and then go into this 90 and into the tank. So something kind of like this, you, you'll see the pump connected to that filter, connected to that, and I'll show you on the car to give you a better idea. Okay, and then uh, right here, so you guys can see, I've got the uh, return line already connected up. It's just a 45, and then it goes back behind there down that side and then I'm gonna cut I think a different hole for them you see that hole now I'm gonna cut a bigger one I think below it so that goes under the car all the way to the back and back here I just got this in the mail too this is the adapter I was telling you guys about so boom that goes on there that is a dash 10 to dash 6 for my return. Other side of the vent is gonna be capped off. Then you go ahead and take your dash six to push lock fitting. And that screws on just like that and that's gonna go back there and connect up to wherever my, uh, I think my line fell, it fell out. Yep, there it is down there. I'll have to push that back up, but that's gonna go to my supply and go down behind there, behind my fuel cell and down underneath. All right guys, so this is gonna be the last update for tonight probably, but we got one of the fittings on for the, I'm really good at catching things I guess today. Um, this is going to be for the line running off the pump to the fuel rail, or actually, I guess, the fuel um, filter is what it's going to be running off of. And, uh, or running to, I should say. And then, as you can see, I have my welder over there. I was welding up this plate here. So that's what my pump sits on. Turned out pretty well. 
and I can always kind of move it forward and back a little bit. I might move it forward a little bit so that this will line up with this hose here, which as you can see right there, got the 90 on the 10 a.m. 90 and that will run and connect right here. So I think I'm going to go get another 90 for this to connect to here. That way it's just clean. Um, I could do a straight cause I bought a straight. So I could bend this out and do a straight, but I don't really like that. I think doing it, uh, with a 90 would be much better. And the, as you can see, this bracket right here is a little bit angled. So it's leaning and I can always bend that out. Um, I don't think it'll really be a big issue that it's leaning like that, but I can always uh, just heat it up and then bend it so that's flat. I didn't realize it wasn't. Um, as you can see, I welded it in up here. I only got one side and the top and the bottom a little on the inside there because the other side was too big of a gap and I couldn't really get my welder in there. I'd have to put a filler piece, but it's uh, it's solid. It's not going anywhere, so that's I just got some bolts for there, um, and that bolts up to the. So I don't know if I'll need a mount for this. For this yet, I don't know if I'll need to mount this to something, but I can always make a little tab. Do something. So I just want to give you guys a another quick update, and uh, I'm gonna get back at it. Probably start running the AN, the AAN line to the front, and then I'm gonna go get that 90 and then uh, get that 90 all on so that I can finish that up. And I still have to route the uh, supply or return line so that uh, it's all tight up underneath there, all where I want it. Um, that's why I was waiting to run the supply line with it to make sure uh, I'm going to mount those kind of together in a way. I'll show you guys that. But uh, then I'll be able to cut this and put this on that fitting and that'll be done completely. So that'll be cool. So I'll uh, check back in in a little bit. All right guys, so I am back working on the Stang and working on finishing up the fuel lines here. So I've got the supply there return is already connected i just have to finish tightening that 45 right here so that 45s goes over as you can see both of them over there i gotta strap them back in because i had them out to get this one on so this is gonna essentially go just like this If I can get it on with one hand, probably not. So you guys see that goes there and then it's all, it's all the way over here, hard to reach, but that's my uh, fuel filter that goes after the one in the back. So that I've got a little rubber dishwasher hose here that I found in my garage. Just went ahead and cut a piece off and then that way uh, hopefully this thing won't, won't vibrate. But essentially this is just gonna be strapped right up there. And uh, I'm gonna get a hose clamp. I need one that's a little bit bigger, but then it'll uh, clamp right there and be good to go. And that way it's kind of easy to change. I may drill a lower hole there eventually. I don't know yet. It's just going to depend where all my wiring comes through, the firewall there and, and stuff like that. So all this can be rerouted. And then I'll go ahead and show you guys everything underneath really quick. All right, so finally made it under the car. It does suck being a little tall and having to work on it on jack stands on the side of my house, but... Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. So you can see right here, they come through. That's where I was showing you up above. Come through here. 
and then they run. Sorry, it's really tight. That's what he said. It's uh, they run right here. Let me get you a flashlight, actually, so you guys can see better. So then they run down here, and I got a clamp right there, and then they kind of cross over. That's uh, screwed into my subframe connector, and then they cross over right here. A little bit more room right here. So that's where they cross over through my subframe connector. That's where the original fuel lines ran. So I said, screw it, I'm just gonna run them same direction. And then they go down here. And there's another mount right there where they tab, or tab I guess, where the hose clamps. I just screwed them together like that. If you guys can tell, I just screwed them together. Then they run down here. And as you can see, I haven't finished strapping them up because I was measuring this, this line, my uh, supply, or sorry, my return line I was measuring up and getting that all fitted in the rear. So let me go show you that. And then this is where the lines come over the axle. I still have to strap that one right there still. And then uh, this one that runs into my fuel pump here. Sorry, I was zoomed in a little bit. This one that runs into my fuel pump right here. That's where it goes over the axle. Fuel pump into fuel filter and then back into my fuel cell. And then if we go up top here, this is where the, uh, that's that uh, return line you saw comes up through the, uh, through the bottom down, down there, comes up, boom, right into the top. And I will be getting, uh, as my air conditioner kicks on. Um, sorry for the background noise of that, but runs, uh, these are just, I believe, caps. I'm not sure if they're actually breathers, but I will have to check on that because I know you are supposed to have a breather. I'm not sure, so if any of you guys know or know what to do on the breather system, just leave a comment down below but I'll be definitely doing some more uh, research. I know they sell some breather stuff. They're just kind of expensive, so I wasn't sure. And uh, yeah, that's the whole fuel system. So I'll show you guys when I get that other fuel filter all mounted up, but uh, super pumped and excited that I got the fuel system all done. Now I can move on to something else. All right, so I completely just failed at showing you guys this whole uh, little how-to, I guess, I, I was going to show you guys because someone said in the comments I should film more of what I'm working on, that way everyone can learn, but it's just kind of hard when uh, you're working on some stuff for hours, nobody wants to watch hours of footage, I don't think, so, um, but I'll try to record a few things for you guys here and there so you can learn too, because I'm learning as I go, so you guys can learn with me, but uh, here's the fuel filter I just tightened these fittings I was going to show you guys and then this is the little piece of rubber you can see it's from a washer hose I just cut it in half and then I'm going to put a hose clamp on there I just got to go run and get a bigger one from Home Depot and then these I just screwed this in back back in because I had it out to get the, some fittings on but that's screwed back in you can see I just have two different size uh, clamps for each line and then I just put them all in the same hole works out pretty good and that's uh, exactly what I do underneath so got a couple more of those to do underneath and she'll be all done so there you go and these I'm gonna leave loose 
because I remember I'm probably going to pull my engine again to get my transmission in. So, yay. All right, guys. So, I just finished up with everything. I wanted to touch on a few more things before I uh, ended this video. But as you can see, I did fix this mount so that it is now straight. As I said before, it was kind of uh, leaning like this. So now I just bent it back straight and I went ahead and put some nylon lock nuts on there. So those are actually locking nylon nuts so that uh, won't come off. But um, yeah. And then uh, down here, I don't know if you can see, let me get my, uh, where'd my flashlight go? So you can see there's a mount I was trying to get in. It was really hard to get in, so I got that one in finally. Right there. And then there is another one. Right up there, if you can't see it, so that the fuel lines won't hit my axle or anything if it fully compressed. They're, uh, they're clear of it, so should be good to go. So I just wanted to give you guys that final little update. There's the fuel filter in the back. I'll have all my parts listed below. Um, I think I'm going to start doing that, listing the parts and that sort of stuff so you guys can see exactly what I use. And this hose is actually called push lock hose. If you guys want to go check it out, it's really cool stuff. A couple different companies sell it, but I got mine from Summit Racing. So yeah, that's gonna be it for the fuel system. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I wanna thank you guys for watching, and if you uh, made it through the whole video, this one might be a little bit longer, but some of you guys were saying uh, to make them longer, so. I'll try my best to film as much as I can when I'm actually working on it and that way you guys can learn but I try to show you every detail that I do um, show on the video that way you guys can kind of see exactly how to do it if you want to do it yourself it's just make it would just really make the videos too long um, if I recorded everything so sorry for that but uh, uploading 40 minute videos and stuff like that would not be fun or editing I should say um, it takes just as long to takes long enough to edit these videos already so um, but anyways I'll stop uh, rambling got the fuel system fully in so that is awesome it's all ready to go we got the battery in last episode I'll be putting that back in the car soon I just want to do some painting and that sort of thing um, and yeah you guys can expect more videos hopefully coming soon Stay tuned for next week's video, and uh, I'm going to go edit this video for you guys right now. Uh, so it's ready to go for Monday, but uh, thanks. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment down below. It really helps me out, and I try to respond to everyone. So um, just let me know if you have any questions or comments or anything like that. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Um.